Okay, so first I have a good news and a bad news. The bad news is that I have only 30 minutes for the talk, so I won't be able to present much of the theory. But the good news is that I prepared an extended version of the talk and it's uh, actually linked to my website, so we can read about everything that I won't be able to tell you about. So, this is the general plan of my talk. Uh, as you can see, there are a lot of fancy terms and concepts on this picture, which you may not be familiar with. And that's fine, because this is just my talk. I will be slowly explaining this, uh, this concept, uh, these concepts uh, during, uh, uh, during the next slides. Uh, this talk is essentially connected with the earlier talk given by Bartek Klin on computations uh, in sets with atoms. And Bartek was actually talking about this upper part of, uh, of the picture. The aim of my, my talk will be to explain how this picture fits into a much bigger picture of top of theory. So, for example, the central concept of set with atoms is just a set of atoms. And in uh, the talk of Bartek, uh, it was the set of natural numbers with equality. Uh, actually, the theory they developed is a bit more general because in state of natural numbers with equality, they can talk about any structure, any uh, oligomorphic structure. Um, I shall explain it a bit later, what does it mean. Uh, so, in fact, they, they don't use the structure in itself, but they talk about the theory of the structure. And the connection with the top of theory is that uh, instead of talking about the theory of an oligomorphic structure, we can just talk about any theory which is formalized in possibly infin infinitary fragment of first order logic. Then, Bartek defined something like a von Neumann hierarchy of uh, sets with atoms. This is essentially equivalent to the category of actions of the automorphism group of um, the, uh, the oligomorphic structure. Uh, and the link between this category and the category um, that is studied in um, Topos theory is that for every theory, we can construct the classifying topos for that theory. Well, one has to be careful about such statements because usually we speak about uh, positive ex and existential fragment of um, infinitary first order logic. This is, the uh, this is the classical result about classifying toposes, but we can also, in some sense, classify first order theories either finite or infinite. Uh, this is just my, a bit more subtle. So here is this correspondence. Then Bartek to, uh, told you about uh, sets definable in the sense of set builder expressions. Uh, and this roughly corresponds to the concept of definability in, uh, in general theory. This is not an exact correspondence uh, because actually the set definables with atoms are not exactly the set definables in the theory of atoms in the sense of first order logic, but they are definable in the maximal tight extension of, uh, of the theory uh, of the structure. Uh, again, I shall explain it a bit later uh, what it means. So, as I said, my plan, the plan of, 
of this talk is to explain how this, con this, this, uh, this concept from the upper part of the picture fits into general type of theory. And as a side effect of this explanation, we shall discover much more powerful universes that allows for effective computations. <coughs> mm. this, talk, this talk will be split on two parts. First, I shall focus on uh, this uh, side of the picture. So I, I shall focus on just theories and definable sets in theories. And then I will move uh, to the classifying toposes. And I should actually spend something like 80 or 90 percent of my time talking about this part of the picture. Because from our perspective, from the perspective of eff effective computations, uh, this is the only part of the picture that really matters here. The reason is that every finitary reasoning and first order reasoning uh, sits actually in the, um, in, the, in the category of definable sets. And we have to move to the classifying topos uh, only when we when we'd like to to, to talk about uh, some inherently uh, infinite uh, infinite objects. For example, when we would like to state uh, a theorem that links regular languages with finite state automata, uh, then uh, link which is something which is infinite, so we have to move to the classifying topos to be able to express it. Uh, okay, so let us fix some terminology. We shall deal with first order logic. So we need a first order signature. Uh, one thing that which, which is perhaps a bit different uh, than, uh, than in the usual mathematics is that we have a collection of sorts. So our logic will be multi-sorted logic. It's not a single sorted logic. The reason is that Mm, there are two reasons. The first is that uh, many structures uh, are naturally multi-sorted. And the other reason is that uh, multi-sorted uh, algebras uh, have a bit better closure properties. So the first order logic over such a signature is defined in the usual way. Uh, and uh, sometimes, well, lay, a bit later, we shall also talk about uh, infinitary first order logic when we allow um, also infinite disjunctions. <coughs> that theory is uh, defined in the usual way. Okay, so here is uh, an example of a theory which is defined in first order logic. This, is, this theory is called, um, by category theorists, the theory of the seedable infinite objects. This is just the theory of, uh, of nature real numbers with equality uh, uh, that, uh, that Bartek mentioned. Uh, so the signature is, consists of a single sort and, is, uh, and it has no symbol, uh, uh, function of symbols nor relation symbols. And we have uh, contained really many axioms. The nth axiom just says that there are at least n elements in the, uh, in the carrier of, uh, of, uh, of such a structure. So a model of this theory is just an infinite set, and every function is a homomorphism of, uh, of such models. So this is actually an example of a theory which is uh, omega categorical. And, and by omega categoricity, we mean that um, all uh, countable models of, uh, of the theory are, are isomorphic. Here is another example of, um, of a theory, a bit more complicated. This is the theory of algebraically al uh, closed fields. Uh, it consists, again, of a single sort um, of two constants, uh, two binary uh, operations, and there are two groups of axioms. Uh, one group just expressed that uh, the this structure is a field. And another group of axioms just expressed that uh, 
every non-constant polynomial uh, over C has a root in C. Okay? So a notable example of, uh, of the theory is the, uh, the field of complex numbers. But maybe less known example, um, or a group of examples that there are algebraically closed fields of finite characteristics. So for example, there is um, uh, an algebraically closed field of characteristic two. That is a field where one plus one equals zero. <coughs> okay, so now this is, let us move to the central concept of this talk, a definable set. And some of you might have expected that the definable set will be something really complicated, but the definition, is, as you can see, is trivial. A definable set is just a formula in the theory. Well, a formula modulo, modulo probability in the theory. Okay? So strictly speaking, a definable set is an equivalent class of formulas modulo probability in the theory. That is, two are equivalent if they are probably, uh, probably equivalent in the theory. Uh, so we have a syntactic sugar, a notation for, uh, for definable sets, and the, this, these sets will be denoted uh, like usual sets uh, by, a, by a notation that is somehow similar to set comprehension. Uh, one important thing to note here is that these sets are not real sets. Okay? This is just a syntactic sugar. This is just a notion for the cl equivalence class of formulas. So the question may be, why do we call them sets if they are not sets? Uh, and the answer is that we'd like to treat them as if they were sets. Okay? We'd like to use set theoretic-like operations for, for them. That is, we shall construct the Cartesian products of such sets, a union of such sets, and so on. Another answer is that they are, in fact, real sets, but in a non-standard universe. <coughs> so, here are some examples of definable sets. So when we consider the theory of natural numbers with equality, uh, there are only two definable sets. Uh, uh, there are two, only two definable subsets of A uh, of the single sort. Uh, there is also an interesting set on the Cartesian product, which looks like this. Okay, so maybe a bit more interesting example of a definable set in, uh, in algebraically closed fields. Here is, here is uh, a union cycle with radius 1. Uh, here is another definable set. Here is yet another definable set, uh, which may look a bit strange because one may ask if this set is non-empty, uh, and the answer is no, because it has no members when we take the interpreta in the, an interpretation of this set in complex numbers. So one may ask then if this set is empty, but the answer is still no, because it has members when it is interpreted in uh, the field of characteristic 2. In fact, it's false C. <coughs> mm. So, to connect this notion of definability with the standard notion uh, of definability uh, that is studied in uh, model theory, uh, we can observe that when our theory is complete, then we can treat definable sets in this sense as real definable subsets in the set theoretic uh, sense uh, of any given model. 
So here are examples in uh, ACF0 that is algebraically closed fields of characteristic 0. Uh, uh, the theory is actually complete and uh, the complete model of the theory uh, is, uh, is the field of complex numbers. So here are definable sets <coughs> in this theory. For example, this, this set is just equivalent to a pair of complex numbers and this set is equivalent to the empty set. So if we have definable sets then in a similar way we can define what it means for a function to be definable and essentially a definable function is just a function whose graph is a definable set. So now when we have sets and functions we can we have a category so uh, well it's not completely trivial fact that uh, uh, the definable sets for any theory with definable functions of the theory from uh, uh, from together category uh, <coughs> but it is so and moreover this category enjoys uh, many nice properties for example uh, if we have two definable sets, then we can construct a Cartesian product of such definable sets. If, if we have two definable sets, then we can take the union of these sets. Uh, if we have a definable set and a definable function that we have, then we have uh, a definable image of the set under the function, the definable inverse image of the set under the function, and so on. There's also, sorry, <coughs> there's also one crucial and perhaps more in, most important construction set theory uh, that I'd like to, uh, to, <coughs> to spend a, a few minutes on. And this is the construction of taking quotients. Uh, usually when we have an equivalence relation on a set, then we can define the set of questions of the relations and the question is is it the same true for definable set moreover not only we have a definable set of not only we have a set of questions in the usual mathematics but we have also a canonical function that sends a member of a set to its abstraction class so the answer to this question is to these questions is no. And generally when we consider theories definable in first order logic, then uh, the category will have many nice properties, but it won't have it, it may lack uh, effect it may lack quotients. This kind of uh, this, uh, this kind of questions where not only you can define a, s a set of questions, but you also have um, a canonical function that sends a member to its abstraction class uh, are called uh, effective questions. So some terminology in model theory, the elements of uh, of uh, of such a question sets are called imaginary elements and the theory with the property that for every set and every equivalence relation there is an effective quotient definable in the theory is called a theory that eliminates imaginaries. Fortunately or not uh, in 1978 Sharon Schaub working on stability theory discovered a process of associating with any first order theory another theory with the property that the notion of models of this theory, uh, this, uh, two theories uh, are essentially the same but the later theory eliminates imaginaries. A few years later 
Maka and Reyes uh, extended this process a bit further, uh, showing how to define a new theory that not only eliminates imaginaries, but also has disjoint coproducts. It was also observed that this process on the level of theories is equivalent to the classical construction of uh, Pretopov's completion uh, uh, described by Alexander Grothendieck. So now, for every first order theorem, we can complete the theorem in the sense of Mackay and Reyes, then take its category of definable sets, and it, all, all, and it always be a pretopos. Uh, that is, it will have disjoint coproducts, uh, effective quotients of equivalence relations, finite limits. Now there is a, a, there are a bunch of theorems linking these two constructions. So, for, so in fact, in most interesting case, uh, the construction of uh, Sharon Schaff and uh, uh, Mackay and Reyes. Uh, coincide. Uh, for example, this is the case for oligomorphic structures. Uh, and now we can state a simple theorem that sets definable with atoms in the sense of Bartek Klein uh, are exactly the sets definable in um, the theory of A extended by elimination of imaginaries in the sense of first order logic. Uh, the proof is really simple. In one way is that uh, when we have uh, an equivalence relation that by a set builder expression we can uh, construct a set of uh, effective quotients. And in the other um, direction uh, we need to go by induction. When we have any formula then we can construct such a formula which, always, which is always uh, an equivalence relation, and then observe that this, uh, this, uh, this set actually corresponds to imaginary elements of, uh, of this new formula. <coughs> okay, so now we have a hierarchy of uh, theories. Uh, the first theory is the theory that uh, uh, <coughs> uh, that is investigated by the team of Professor Bojanczyk. Uh, this is the theory of an oligomorphic structure. So an oligomorphic structure is a, stru a structure is called oligomorphic when uh, the, uh, the group of automorphisms uh, has the property that, the, uh, that, f um, that its canonical action on finite power of the structure has only finitely many orbits. Uh, we know that every oligomorphic structure is actually an omega categorical structure. Uh, perhaps it's not that well known that the converse is not true even, uh, even if the language is countable. Uh, and that's perhaps the reason why, uh, why Bartek and Mikolaj uh, actually stick to oligomorphic groups. The right notion here is the group which is called coherent and roughly speaking a group is coherent if and if it is uh, the automorphism group of uh, omega categorical structure. Uh, <coughs> there is a well-known uh, characterization of omega categorical theories and uh, those are the theories with the property that in every context uh, in every finite context, there are only uh, finitely many formulas up to uh, equivalence modulo the theory. So, in the next step, we can talk about something which is sometimes called locally uh, omega categorical theories. So, we can drop the assum assumption that we have a theory of uh, an structure. And, uh, and say that, okay, um, we can work 
with, uh, with theories uh, satisfying this property. The difference between this theory and this theory is that this theory can, uh, does not have to be complete. So for the perspective, from the perspective of effective computations, okay, this is actually almost the definitive uh, answer to the question which theories uh, allows for effective computations on, on finite structures, because if this property is not satisfied, then, well, in some sense we can design, a, of course it depends on the semantics, but we can, can design, for example, a, a program that loops over all subsets of a given finite set and it won't terminate. But, uh, in reality, restricting a bit the language, we can do a bit better and uh, consider theories with the property that, that in every context the hating algebra generated by the formulas in the context <coughs> is actually finite. Uh, uh, by the way, I'm speaking about hating algebras because uh, I didn't mention it. Uh, we can talk here about intuitionistic logic. We don't have our logic to be classical. So here is an example. Let us fix such a theory satisfying these properties and consider the graph reachability problem or the problem of finding the transitive closure of, uh, of a relation. So the question is, uh, is this problem decidable? And the answer is yes. And we can write a simple while program uh, um, like you can see on the screen. And the reason why we can why this kind of computations are effective uh, is that every construction here can be described in terms of the logic and this while loop terminates because of this property. We, have, we start with only finitely many formulas and we close them under some logical operations so by this property there are only finitely many such, such formulas. So one may ask can we do such computations in more general categories than categories of definable sets? So, well, at least such a category should have finite products. And now consider again the problem from the previous slide. So, to be able to define such a program, uh, we have to be able to compose the relation. And this requires uh, the notion of, uh, of, uh, of pullbacks and existential quantifiers and uh, there must be also a well-defined notion of unions of subobjects. So, in fact, to be able to express uh, these computations that I showed uh, on the previous slide, uh, we need these properties of the category and here is a theorem that uh, actually every such category is the category of definable sets for some fragment of uh, first order logic. Moreover, by the constructions that I uh, showed to you, uh, we can almost for free inject uh, these joint coproducts to such theories uh, theories and uh, and uh, question sets. <coughs> okay, so how much time do I have left? Minus two minutes. <laughs> okay, so thank you so much. <laughs> and that's all.